Okay. Okay, it is 10.14. I wasted 10 uh, minutes, almost nine minutes of everybody's time. Sorry about it. And we do the technical, we have technical difficulties. And then again, for those of you who are familiar with the settings, uh, it is very difficult, very difficult to have a Mac if uh, connected to the Zoom and then having multiple speakers and multiple presenters. Uh, it was not good to start. Hopefully, we, we will see that uh, uh, it goes better when we dive into the presentation. So, before I uh, go into the Mac and the Windows presentation, uh, Windows demo of the um, of the screen reader, uh, I need to share some information with you. So you guys know me, Hadi Rangin. Um, just wanted to i need to a few seconds to concentrate you know because after so many issues one after another need to concentrate a little bit so let, let's let's uh, start the, before we dive into a screen reader accessibility we need to check a lot of stuff in advance so um, and then uh, as i mentioned earlier the keyboard accessibility is the first thing that we want to do that. And then you have seen the presentation of my, oh, we don't have any camera, right? No, no. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, uh, uh, you have seen the presentation of my students that, that as they were, as they were uh, introducing accessibility testing tools. Um, As, as mentioned, why I am hearing that? I'm hearing audio feedback in my headset. It might be the, I'm not sure why. So every few seconds, I hear that. So it, it is a little distracting. Uh, hopefully it gets better. I, I do not know. I hear the feedback on my headset. So we again, this it happens. Same thing. What's what's happening on the screen? Something is happening. It is repeating the information. You don't yeah. see it. You really use the PowerPoint. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's let's start one more time. So we start with the keyboard uh, testing. And we identified that some of the issues, the accessibility of uh, the screen reader depends on very much on uh, keyboard accessibility. Um, so as, as, we, as also, as we mentioned earlier, uh, with using this accessibility testing tool, you can get up to in a really good condition, maybe 30% of the access, uh, technical accessibility problem. And you have to do that a lot of uh, the manual testing, uh, code checking uh, until you have their, you know, a reasonable, uh, could provide a reasonable experience. And one thing that I wanted, you probably will be hearing from me throughout the, this workshop is that uh, we never should use a screen reader to determine the issues. We, we want to use a screen reader to verify or identify or to verify the issues that we find and see that how a screen reader behaves. As you will see later, a screen reader they are, is a really complex uh, application and they come with the hundreds I'm not exaggerating, hundreds of fine tuning and configuration. And, the, and these tools, screen reader, are made for, uh, for end, their, their end user, uh, not for, uh, you know, for, for accessibility testing. So depending who is using that, what is his or her skill, uh, screen reader uh, skill set is, uh, and the, how depending on what configuration it is, you can get could get a lot of different results. One thing that I usually hear from screen from the developers is that they say that hey, uh, 
it doesn't work, can I add a kind of patch uh, and then find a kind of workaround solution for existing problem? No, workaround solution are not accessibility solutions. Workaround remain workaround solutions. So, and then real quickly, Hadi, there's a, a Zoom uh, alert that's covering part of the screen. Um, if you can go to, do you know where to turn off the live, live transcription, transcription alert? Alert. You can yeah. get the meeting controls. Right now. Yep. And then hopefully that's six. Yep, that's it. That's that. Oh, no, no, no. Close, close. Yep, yep. there you go. And yep. Good. Okay. So when we do that for the testing, before really we start with screen with the testing, we check, uh, as we said, we, we do that first is, uh, with, with keyboard testing. And then these are the, some of the protocol that we try to follow. We look for the consistency of the application, the visual and functional consistency. We want to see that they, they you know, from one page to another page, as long as they are the same domain, they look the same. Remember every, every user, not the only screen reader user, do we, do we have some, we need some time to familiarize our itself. So you do not want to surprise your, your, your user from one page to another page by changing the, landscape or, or the look and feel and, and behavior. Uh, functions, uh, uh, we want also be consistent in the uh, way how we provide these elements. Um, a typical example that I use here is this. You see that, you know, in one page, for example, for a form, they ask you, you know, about the gender. And then in one page, you see that they use uh, a combo box to select the gender. And then, you know, the subsequent page, you see that sometimes they use a radio group for that. So uh, everyone needs some uh, time to familiarize uh, himself or herself with the, with the page. And when we see this consistency, inconsistency, it, it, it causes problem. Keyboard, keyboard uh, operability. Um, so uh, it is really essential. We want to make sure that we can navigate inside the page and then perform all the applicable uh, functions uh, with the keyboard from A to Z and no cheating, no, no, no mouse use. So you, you have to define your business processes for every application and then, you know, try to perform them fully with the keyboard. So when you are doing that, you need to make sure that, you know, the, you know, that you never focus, uh, you lose your focus indicator. You have to always know where your focus is and then don't blame your uh, eyes or, or eyesight that you, you know, are getting older or uh, something is wrong with it or you need a bigger monitor. When you don't see it, then you don't see it. Uh, uh, one, another important, we, remember, we, we, will, we will be using two terms, uh, focus indicator and focus management. Focus indicator, which we, with focus indicator, we refer to that, uh, that indicator that, that uh, uh, what we call it, that we, you see the object that uh, has a focus, uh, we, we refer that to focus in the indicator. In, I think in Google, in Google Chrome, it is usually a, a blue box, something mm -hmm. like that. But focus management is that, you know, how you handle the, 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 the focus. For example, when you submit a form, where do you set the focus back to? Do you send it to the top of the page or do you send it at the bottom of the page or some other elements? And then if you are a keyboard user, you will see that you, you know that it is extremely important that your man or focus goes to an expected area or except expected element that you want. So you will be surprised to see that when you go, for example, to some of these pages, when it is just one single page, you uh, update a form 
and then uh, your focus is no longer there. Focus indicator moves, travels to the top of the page. And then as a keyboard user, you have to press N number of the key press to get back to where, where you left off. Um, heading structure, or before that, let me mention that the, the ARIA landmark, ARIA landmark are essential, very essential. Um, uh, for those of you who uh, have, haven't heard me about ARIA Landmark, I, I, I usually say that this is a, one of the most simplest things to implement to make it uh, your website or web application accessible uh, with, the, with the least effort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, work. Uh, but this is very effective. Uh, what, what's on ARIA, ARIA Landmark? just consider you come to a page uh, as a sighted person in a in a fraction of a second you know that how the page is constructed you can see for example there is a banner on the top you can see there is a navigation on the top or left uh, or there is footer section so uh, screen reader user they do not see the page in the way that you see so they see one element at the time and then that is, uh, uh, and there is no, you have no idea about the surrounding elements or the relationship between those elements. Uh, so uh, are your landmark, it is a means to provide the semantic information about the uh, you know, big object or big containers that you are using. Um, there are seven predefined are your landmarks. Uh, so, main where do you put your main uh, the content main content main information is the core information of your page uh, there are uh, another there is another uh, landmark or banner as the name says that you know usually is used for to uh, maintain the banner information navigations uh, there are content info which is a fancy or ugly name for footer uh, there are search complementary and then and, and so on um, so the, you, you will see that later when we go to website the first thing that we use is just to see that how the application how the website is constructed so, and then all your landmark is the key the tool or key means you know to tell us what's happened how the page is constructed the next thing that we would like to see that is a heading Heading is the uh, again another uh, accessibility features or another uh, means that we use to uh, to navigate in the page and understand the page. Uh, for headings, uh, we want that there are, as Alisa mentioned that we want that they are hierarchical, meaningful. Uh, and, 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 and complete with a complete, I mean, hierarchical and, uh, and logical and meaningful. This is, this is uh, uh, clear, but with a complete, it means that uh, every major section of your page should be covered by heading. So we, I see that usually the developers, they say that, hey, we are, we are using headings. But then when I ask them, does the, the, the do these uh, headings, they provide a an outline of the entire page, then we realize that it is not the case. So once you start using heading for your content, make sure that you every major section of your page, at least major section, they get a proper heading. So the other stuff that you want to look for. Hadi, before you continue, uh, there's something we want to try to fix with the, uh, something covering the screen again. Um, Which is good. Which is good. It's so the Zoom meeting toolbar. Um, trying to zoom the mouse again. What's that? So the scroll, sh the screen sharing toolbar is blocking the screen. Um, we're trying to use the mouse to move it. So we're connecting the dongle back in. We have connected it from the okay. Mac. Do you want me to get put connected to the front? I think I got it in the front. Oh, there we go. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 
Oh, type back, I think. Right. Are we there? Uh, no, you want to. Oh. Yeah, okay, other important is inform uh, stuff that we want to consider is a grouping of relevant information. You, you probably uh, uh, have seen or used, have been using that uh, ordered and unordered or definition list are extremely important to group uh, the, 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 our tools to. Uh, for accessibility that way you uh, screen reader user they know that they uh, that they are entering or they are facing with their related information if this uh, list uh, you, if you try to mimic a list without using the list markup uh, so we will not we will never know that they are part of the same group so the only way that you can convey the relationship between element is list either of those lists they work for the graphic we want to make sure that the uh, informational graphic not a stylistic graphic we are not saying that you should not use a stylistic graphic you can use it but you know uh, of course you know a lot of stylistic graphics should be done through css but if you decide to have some uh, graphic inside the page then uh, if uh, you need to make sure that it is not rendered by a screen reader or do you do that by pressing by doing that alt equal code code you know, setting the value to null for informational graphic you need to provide meaningful information and then i said you're providing an alt text for images it is an art and then uh, i guess uh, this afternoon we have I, I believe that we have a session on that you might want to uh, uh, participate in it. Forms are again another. I, I would say one of the uh, complicated component of the web for accessibility. And then when we said a form, uh, a form element, we refer to a text box, combo box, radio uh, check boxes, uh, uh, buttons, menus. Uh, 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 a lot of maybe not menus but the text area input field they are considered as a form elements or they are, uh, and then uh, interacting with them can be quite challenging uh, there are very well defined accessibility guidelines for how to make forms accessible and as long as you follow them you are fine uh, another important part uh, is that uh, the testing for uh, verification or, or error handling or warning and error handling. Uh, that is a, a piece that I see that usually is neglected. Uh, screen reader user, like uh, any user, they can make mistake or they cannot follow the instruction properly. Uh, and the you know, error could ha happen but how we inform them, how do we lead them, help them to identify the issue, resolve it, this is also another important thing to consider. So how was the screen reader, the, what the screen reader we have? Uh, uh, the web aim has published, uh, I think their, they, I think annually they provide some statistic about their, uh, uh, the uh, screen reader usage they make it a kind of public uh, uh, survey and then uh, as you you will I mean, as calendar I said, calendar 33 new items 10 of you will see the <laughs> too many things are talk, talking here uh, you you will receive the slide and you okay, and, and there is a link to their findings uh, but the in the windows environment we have narrator jaws and nvda and we are considering nvda today uh, for demo and then in the mac environment we have voiceover which is from mac, uh, from apple and this is well integrated with, with the os and then for uh, ios we have uh, also voiceover and then for the 
Android uh, Talkback. There are some other screen reader that I'm really not familiar on and not using them, but these are the major screen reader for different operating systems. So one of the most difficult part of the screen reader interaction that you will be seeing is this, that I'm saying, we call it the linearization or visualization of the content. So when you go to, as a screen reader, when you go to a page, uh, you see the elements, you see the, the focusable and non-focusable element, you know, I mean, static uh, text the, next to you know, links, next to graphic, next to, uh, you, you, can, you, you can see all those components in, uh, together. But for screen reader, as I mentioned earlier, we see only one element at the time. We see one piece of text, for example, at the time. We see one button at the time. We see one menu or menu item at the time. And then uh, uh, when you go to a new page uh, that you are not familiar, so you do not know how the page is constructed. Yet you, Aria Landmark tells you the major component of the page, but uh, at the end, you know, you want to go to the inside the page and then, you know, interact with it. And then when you go there and you do not, uh, uh, you, you, you see the text, you see links, you see form elements, and you have to understand and read it. For example, you go to your bank and then you want to check your transactions. When you go there, uh, there, there are some, a lot of interactions uh, or, or a lot of navigation uh, things that you have to do to get to the body of the page, but once you are there and you have to, uh, for example, make a transfer, uh, you need to interact with those elements. You need to understand what there is a form. You need to understand there is, uh, you know, the form elements, for example, from what account to what account you want to transfer, how much, what date, and, and so on. Understanding all these elements, uh, sometimes it is uh, understanding the overall uh, the task that it is in front of you requires you to navigate. So uh, navigate in the page and read everything, uh, even you do not see their visual relationship. So screen reader usually they provide a virtual view of the page. It means that screen reader can see and read everything. In other words, everything is linearized from left to right, top to bottom. And then uh, you read element by element. For example, you go from a piece of text to the next graphic. From that graphic, you go to, uh, you know, for example, radio group or text box or whatever it is in your way or however, it appears in the DOM uh, the document object model. So uh, that is the most difficult part of the screen reader that is difficult to understand uh, for uh, uh, non-native blind user <laughs> or a screen reader user. So uh, we will uh, look into that in both Mac and, and, and with Mac and NVDA. And then hopefully by end of the workshop, you it becomes a little clear. So when we go to a page, to a new page that we do not know how it is constructed, and once we get to the body of the page, then we have to do the page discovery. So we have to read the page from top to bottom sometime to understand that, oh, these are the pieces that we have to are in this page, and these are the functions that they, uh, they offer. So usually it is one time uh, thing that we do that uh, to familiarize ourselves with page. So it is, the, I would say the most difficult part of the screen reading interaction is this, you know, navigation and understanding the page. But once you are familiar with the page, then it will be a lot easier. I think I, yeah, that mentioned that. So uh, one thing that I need us to mention that when we are in a, when the page is a linearized or virtualized, that we are reading the page, um, the, the, then the screen reader come here to help. 
um, sometimes you really you do not want to read from upper left corner to the bottom right corner. Uh, uh, you you know that the page has, for example, heading, and you want to go to the next heading. How do you find it? Uh, so in order to do it, first you need to be in virtualized mode, in this linearized mode. In, in NVDA, we call that browse mode. And then I guess in Mac, we said that quick nav are on. <laughs> so they, they use the, the, you know, different vocabulary. So we, the, the generic term that we use in, in our shop here, we call that in a reading mode. So when you are in a reading mode of the page, so a screen reader are watching for your keystrokes. Anything that you press, screen reader can, so US can, has new window. can see. New options button. Menu window system. Can you keep it quiet? Let me just press the Showing rows key. 1 to 11. Yeah. And horizontal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so oh, and, uh, a quick question in the chat is what is the word being synonymously used synonymously for linearized uh, i think she's referring to virtualized virtualized yeah yeah or or again in the screen in, in in nvda they call that browse mode in jaws they call that uh, virtual mode and then uh, uh, in in i think in mac we call Zoom that US we has have new when on uh, but again, let's let's use reading mode. So in the reading mode, the screen reader are watching for anything that you press, and then uh, and then they consider as a, a screen reader command. For example, when you type letter H, screen most screen reader program they see that as a oh as a command for finding the next heading, uh, and then they move your focus to the next heading. If you, for example, type letter T, T for table, so they check for the next table. Uh, or if you type letter, you know, uh, I would say that it is different. I, in, in BDA, for example, if you type letter F, F for form control, it takes you to the next form control. So, uh, but remember, you are in reading mode. When you get to that form, but you have to interact with the form. So if, if, for example, in the form says that, you know, it is an input field, an input field, and then ask you for your name, as soon as you type, now my name is Hadi, as soon as I type H, it considered that H again as the command. So, I won't be able to enter my name unless I turn off that virtual mode or reading mode and tell the screen reader, hey, I am no longer uh, in a read, I don't want to be in a reading mode. I want to interact with that form. From then you have to switch your screen reader mode uh, from reading to interaction mode. So that, that way screen reader no longer uh, steals the key that you press, so it is uh, everything that you type goes directly to the application. That's why what that you can see that. But again, we see that. I just wanted to that you, you get some idea about that. You know, form uh, interaction mode versus reading mode, and then uh, and again, we cannot be in a reading mode, and then at the same time. Uh, interact effectively. We can do that limited interaction, for example, select a checkbox or radio box, but definitely for uh, form controls that requires typing like edit or text area, you definitely have to be Zoom in, US in has the other mode. Okay. So we will We'll be checking this stuff uh, okay I, I, I missed this this slide so that, that is the key that every developer wants to know that if they can use the screen reader for testing and let's read it together but yes but <laughs> remember this is not designed for the accessibility testing 
It is designed to verify the issue. I mean, we can do that to verify the issue, not to determine the issue. It is not for keyboard operability because the screen reader, they, they provide additional functionality that keyboard user won't have. And then for those of you are familiar with screen reader, sometimes they have, uh, uh, since they are made for the end user, they try to compensate for the lack of accessibility features. So they have some algorithm to guess, uh, to do some guessing for the missing labels. Or, uh, and then uh, JAWS is very famous for that, uh, uh, but NVDA usually doesn't do that. Uh, Bottom line, don't use it unless you really know what you are doing. <laughs> okay. Now, we need to go to our Mac and walk you through the, some of this stuff. And I hope that things goes well here. Okay, I, I turn off. Okay, I don't, don't need that again. Uh, give me a few seconds. Zoom.us. So Zoom Zoom Safari. You view options button. You are viewing high range and screen. Uh, yeah, we're in the Zoom. View options button. I need to stop this one, right? Right? Uh, yeah. Zoom.us. Zoom video stop, window. I guess this one. Yeah. Desktop 11 items selected. You are currently on a switch. Live transcription. Closed captioning transcription. has been enabled. Press CMD plus tilde to return to the meeting controls. Zoom.us. Yeah, yeah, the so there's Zoom meeting window. Notes 13 of desktop 11 items selected. You are currently on. You have started screen share. Content is empty. Yeah. Yep. And then. Okay. In, my, in participants can now see Zoom, Zoom, Safari, Finder, VoiceOver Utility, VoiceOver Utility. Okay. We are getting now to Mac. And then uh, uh, I voice over util I utility window, voice over utility. I hope you have followed the instruction that we sent to you. So I am expecting by now everybody has configured uh, the, the the Mac, uh, the voice over to their uh, desired speed, uh, rate, and you know, and other attributes. Um, for Mac user. Uh, I need a confirmation that you guys are running voiceover right now. So if you haven't done that, the, so I can share with you. So you can, uh, we can go through that quickly, but we are not doing, doing any technical support. Actually, we need technical support here to resolve some of the issues. <laughs> so uh, command F5 uh, starts voiceover. And then um, there are some uh, uh, basic things that you should have done that by now. Uh, going to uh, then turn on the full keyboard support. We have the instruction in the, uh, the document, uh, the, in the email that we send it to you. And I hope you had the chance to do it. But by default, the uh, Mac doesn't support full keyboard support. Uh, that doesn't do that. It does only, I guess, for links. But if you wanted to do that for every focusable element, you have to check that, uh, uh, change that settings. So refer to that uh, email that we sent it to you. And then uh, an older Safari, there is also an accessibility setting that needs to be turned on. So also refer to the instruction. And remember what we are doing with voice over here. Uh, it is really, we are, I'm just trying to help you to understand how a screen reader or specifically voice over is working. I have seen a lot of developers that are using Mac and then they, they test or they try to test with the screen reader, but they are not utilizing it properly or they are a little confused or they get uh, overwhelmed with the information that they receive or they are not sure about their, their findings. So um, we will be showing only voiceover uh, inside the, uh, inside the uh, browser or which we, we use Safari for this case. But uh, 
to make sure that the Until instruction the table. instruction was correct, I would like that you uh, try to do the, some basic adjustment. So the voice over command, the voice over modifier key by default is control and option. And if you follow our instruction, hopefully you have enabled the caps lock to be also your modifier too. So when we say modifier, it means that we have to hold down those keys or the modifier key and press a command or press another key to perform a voiceover command. And, and, and uh, for example, you know, I am pressing voiceover, uh, I mean, um, uh, uh, in, in this, during this conversation, I refer to this modifier or voiceover modifier key as a VO, V O, V for Victor or, or, or Oscar. So VO means control and option. And then I am pressing VO and K. Starting keyboard help. Type keys to hear their names. Hold down the voiceover keys while typing to hear voiceover commands. Press the escape key at the top left corner of the keyboard to stop help. So I turn uh, uh, or slow down my screen reader. Um, anyone finds this is too slow or too fast? So probably not. Uh, for those of you, please, somebody tells me it is fast or too slow. So let Command, me. Control, option, shift, right arrow. Right arrow. Open next speech attribute guide. Open the next speech attribute guide. Do you hear, is it loud enough? Fast enough? Slow enough? <laughs> okay. I don't hear anything. So I ask. There's a good speed in the chat. Yep. A good, good chat. Wonderful. Thank you. We will then we go with this one. But if we want to change it, I'm pressing escape. Stopping key change it. Remember. Command F5 starts voiceover. The shut up key or the, the key that muses voiceover is the control key. Just press control key once and, and good luck. Sometimes voiceover doesn't, uh, doesn't stop, but you know, you know, we don't have very much control over it, but mostly it stops voiceover immediately. So control key, when it, it becomes too chatty, press control key to stop it. Now, I want to go to some of the basic settings that we shared with you, for example, changing the speed. So the, the command that we are using to change that, there are many ways to do it, but the, if you want to do that with the keyboard, it is voice over or vo plus command plus, is this is also shift, right? Uh, yeah, I think you can. Voice automatically okay. select based on line braille table English intonation okay. the closing the, intonation the command is vo command shift you hold down them <laughs> and and now I think you need to use your toes too okay that is bad you know voiceover is really bad for for as far as keyboard unless you have very functional uh, fingers so vo plus command plus shift i hold down and i use right arrow key intonation 50 percent it tells me intonation 50 percent i don't care for intonation at this time braille table english braille unified table system. is not relevant voice automatically select based on language this is about the voice what kind of voice i want to use uh, most of you probably are if you haven't changed the default you are using alex rate 40 percent consider is the rate is 40 percent and I, I am still holding these four keys that I mentioned: that vo, command, and shift. And now I use arrow up. Forty-five percent. You probably hear and see that it is changing. Fifty percent. Fifty-five percent. Sixty percent. Sixty-five percent. Seventy percent. Seventy-five percent. Eighty percent. Eighty-five percent. Ninety percent. Okay. Okay. Then and so on. Seventy percent. Sixty-five percent. I am pressing arrow down. Sixty percent. Fifty-five. Fifty-five percent. Forty percent. Okay. I guess. I don't want to come lower than this because otherwise I fall asleep. Okay. And then again, if I want to change other options for voice uh, from voiceover, pitch 15%. I press right arrow key while I was holding all those for uh, the keys, vo, command, and shift. 
volume 35 percent volume and then uh, this is the next option i press up arrow key while i'm holding the other modifier 40 percent 45 50 percent 45 percent okay 45 percent so it's good so utility I, categories table i, I released my those fingers so i need to rest <laughs> my fingers need to rest <laughs> Okay, these are the stuff, the basic stuff that you can adjust it and then the, the change it to a reasonable uh, speed, intonation, pitch, and then and so on. Uh, other place that you need to check that is the, the uh, utility, uh, voiceover utility it has tons of the options. Zoom. Safari, Finder, voiceover utility. Here. One of my recommendations is that please, please do not change anything if you do not understand that. Because it can take you really to a place that uh, would be very difficult to debug it <laughs> and find out what is wrong here. Note again that this is made for the script for, for end user. And end user, they have different needs and they change that based on their, their needs. If you change a lot of stuff here, then you, when you go for the user for accessibility testing or checking, you might get different result. So uh, the, the, again, there are a lot of options here that they, they could help end user, but it doesn't mean that everybody use that settings. A setting that it is good, for example, for uh, my colleague might not be necessarily good for me because I am using in a different way, in a different environment, with different application. So it is important that you do not change this stuff unless you really know the consequence of it. So when you go to this... Uh, Speak the following utility category, voiceover utility categories table. So you general. see the category here, I press arrow down. Quick nav off, verbosity. And then uh, speech, navigation, web, sound. It is a little slow. But web, okay. navigation, uh, speech, verbosity. So general. With the general, you get a lot of. Speak the following greeting after welcome to Mac OS. Display welcome dialog when voiceover starts. Oh, Unchecked. I forgot to mention that when I am navigating, when uh, when I was here. Speak the following greeting at utility categories table, general. I use just arrow key. Remember, the most uh, uh, the one important thing is that if you are a keyboard user, it is you are you are you are safe. Um, if you are just mouse user, it will be some learning curve that you need to use keyboard. And uh, um, uh, yes, voiceover or uh, NV, uh, uh, Mac offers a lot of meaningless shortcut keys. But uh, if you love Mac so much, then I think that is something that comes with it. So you have to learn also those ugly shortcut keys that sometimes you can you need to you know uh, use your toes or the, uh, do that handstand and a lot of acrobatic stuff to perform a function. Um, when when to navigate to the next element. I use usually voice over modifier, I mean, vo command, vo, vo modifier, which is in my case, it is a command and option, and I press right arrow key. Speak the following greeting after login. My you are currently on a text element. Welcome to Mac OS. So Display welcome dialog you, when you keys to use as the voice over moving. control option or caps lock. Along, uh, and then I use the same keys to use back. as display what welcome to mac speak the following great utility categories table general selected and here you are current the recommendation is that to use the default keys mac command or mac uh, shortcut keys as much as possible this is not shortcut keys but i just make sure that uh, i press arrow down verbosity when i'm on verbosity if i want to go to see the the details i press Whoa, and go right. Speech selected tab one of five. Braille tab text tab announcements tab hints tab five of five. Default speech verbosity. You are currently on a text element. Medium default Medium. speech verbosity. Okay. Pop up button. So it depends on you know th that is a place that uh, you want to check that. Um, I recommend that you do not disable hint. Um, the, uh, 
as a, as a, as a basic user, uh, hint is the information that comes at the later time. So it reads, for example, the, the value of the element that I am, it types of the element, and then, you know, the instruction that it usually announces, it comes usually as last piece of the information that we hear, and uh, we refer to that usually as a hint. So you can disable hint uh, at some stage when you are more comfortable. Um, but for if you are testing, uh, the, you know, if you're a developer and you, you want to make sure that you get the right instruction for the elements that you are developing, so you probably want to listen to it to make sure that the instruction matches the stuff that you are expecting. Default speech verbosity. So there are lots of hundreds of functions here. Hints tab uh, five of five announcements tab text tab for example, three of five for text tab selected and punctuation. So you, you can sp specify the punctuation level. So do you want that it reads every time when it runs into comma or, or the punctuation any punctuation? Uh, they have some pre default uh, pre defined uh, modes. Some punctuate, some punctuation menu, check none. You are curb customized, all. You are check mark, some, some. You are so you can even menu. customize it. You can say that, you know, for example, when you get to a dollar sign, do you want it reads a dollar sign or not? So, a lot of fine tuning. Uh, but again, do not change it unless you really know the consequence of that. Some I punctuation pop up to, button because I didn't want to change it. We go back. Hints tab and now text selected. Uh, oh, and hints tab let me just selected. Talk about the hint. Uh, let me show it to you. Speak instructions for using the item in the voiceover cursor. Check checkbox. So you are current. That is I mean, at this time I said that yes because uh, you know it is important for to me. When an item has a help tag, you speak help. When an item has a help tag. Pop-up button. Pop up Choose button. how to announce so, an item's help tag. So then you will see here. Menu. Do nothing. Speak notification. Check mark. Speak help. Do nothing. Check mark. Speak. And and, and so on. So, speak help. And when there an are some settings that for some event, they, it, it you can even have have some uh, some audio sounds with it. When it speaks hints. So when it goes, for example, to a, a specific. Uh, interaction it can create the sound announcements text braille tab speech tab utility categories table speech navigation oh speech. you are speech voices selected tab one of two pronunciation tab mute speech customized language list table you are currently on a tape add language customized language list table okay you are currently on a table to enter this table press con in customized language list table English language Deutsch. Espanol. Okay. English. So, actually, I, I didn't have Spanish. I had G English and German, but uh, for, for I didn't have the the, the Spanish here. But the, last night I realized that the, for the, the the page that we are going to demo, we have some Spanish text. So I saw that it was not reading or switching to Spanish. But then I realized that oops, because the Spanish language was not installed. So. For uh, the, those developers who are using multilingual uh, multi uh, content, um, so if you are testing that, you need to make sure that in your voiceover setting, you install those languages or you check those languages. Otherwise, uh, voiceover will not automatically switch those languages. De default. You are currently on a cell inside of a table. Out of customized lap mute pronounced voiceover utility. So, you are currently on a toolbar, voiceover utility, navigation, web. So you are there currently are a lot on of text element, utility categories, table, web, selected, navigation, general, tab, web rotor, tab, okay. three of three. This is a, you are again, currently again, on a, becoming a little more diff difficult, web rotor. Navigate web pages by. You are currently on a selected radio button, one of two. Okay. Please do not change it. Let's go with the DOM. Grouping items when navigating web tables. You are currently on a text element. Okay. Group items within when. So this is a little difficult topic. I will discuss it when we are on a page. So and, and one thing that I wanted to make web, sure that we do not page. change it. Web rotor tab three of three general net utility categories tape sound visuals commanders. 
Braille. Uh, you are currently activities. Voice over recognition. Voice over recognition here. Using on device intelligence. Your image descriptions. Uncheck checkbox. Okay. Is it, I think most of you, many companies have started doing that, you know, uh, recognizing images and then give you some alt text. Do not rely on their recognition. Uh, if you have an, uh, an, an image uh, or informa information or graphic, you need to provide meaningful uh, instruction. Otherwise, the voiceover will come up with something, a statue uh, uh, or some, some, some generic information in the best case. And these are not acceptable as a meaningful alt text. Okay, make sure that it's checked. Uh, you, you don't check it. Zoom Safari. Launch meeting. Zoom web content. Launch meeting. Zoom web con vertical splitter collapsed on left. You are currently on a vertical splitter. To start and launch meet close tab. You are currently on a vertical splitter. Success. Accessible university web content. You are currently on web content. Okay, Reload page. Straight. Success. Accessible university page has. Heading level one. Now show in slide one. Okay. This is the page that we have been using throughout the, the day today. So far, I think by my student. Okay, I guess you guys use this, this page, right? For mm -hmm. demo. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, so you are familiar with that. This is a page that uh, Terriol has created. And then I'm so thankful for having uh, uh, this page because it, ha it uh, has a, the inaccessible and accessible version. Uh, they look visually almost identical, uh, but uh, one of them has almost zero accessibility feature. Uh, and this page that I am on has full accessibility feature. So, it doesn't make sense if I go and check the inaccessible version. We are, we, I want to show you how uh, VoiceOver handles accessibility features. So as, as I told you here, um, robot with a friendly face assembled with various scraps of. When we come to a page, consider I'm not familiar with this page. I want to know that what has the major component of this page. So Landmark comes here to help, but um, uh, 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 for uh, for those of you who are, who are familiar with Windows uh, and then screen reader on Windows, uh, you know that uh, it is very diff very different uh, in Mac. Um, here uh, in in vo Voiceover, uh, uh, we have different way of looking into the accessibility component. In this case, you know, I was looking for landmark. Um, the easiest way is to, for you who are visual, I do that vo you. Window spots menu, images menu, auto web spots, no items in web tables menu, headings menu, heading level to links menu, window spots, me images menu. Robot with a friendly face assembled with various scraps of hardware and mounted on an old desktop speech synthesizer image. HTTPS colon slash slash www.https colon robot robot with a friend robot with a friendly face robot with a friendly face submitted equals yeah HTTPS robot with a friendly face assembled with various. I think this is a page after submission, right? Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay. Menu cut. HTTP robot with a friendly face assembled with very HTTPS colon slash slash three. You are currently on a text yeah. element. Okay. So I was surprised to not to see the landmark. Yeah. Okay. That, that this is a page. <laughs> we are in a images menu. Text fields, auto web spot, checkboxes, menu, buttons, menu, no items in web landmarks menu. Okay. What is this? This is a way that you can see a lot of accessibility features in uh, quickly. Um, tables, landmarks, menu. I don't, I don't know exactly what, what toolbar. You are currently feature. on a toolbar. Let me see that. To I, interact with the items on this toolbar, you, press control, option, shift. I'm pressing OK. Starting keyboard help. Type keys to hear their names. Hold down the I control. I want to see that what they really call that. I'm pressing VO U. Option U. Uniform. Rotor. Brings up a menu for selecting items found in okay. escape. It's called that, keyboard help. It's called they call that the rotor. I didn't expect that they would call that rotor. So you press the rotor command. Landmarks menu. 
and then uh, all the I'm pressing right arrow key to see the different different accessibility component that I have selected in my Vo, uh, Vo utility web settings. The list no, of the stuff menu. here. Buttons menu checkboxes. You can select these elements in the in your Vo utility web section. Somebody might not care for, for example, buttons, so they can disable it and they, 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 then it will not show up here. But uh, for me, as a, as a person who will be testing for accessibility uh, um, most of my time, so I would like to see that all, all those elements. Uh, so I enable most, most stuff here. So here, what I'm trying to say that you, that is we call that rotor, and then rotor are a collection of accessibility features that uh, that I can uh, quickly see if they are present in my page or not. So I press right arrow key. Auto web spots menu, text fields menu. And then if I want to see that, if I have any text, uh, uh, any element on the page, I press arrow down. Name required, required edit text, email required, required city, Edit tab, state slash province, so edit tab. The beauty of this rotor is this, that you not only can get an overview of the elements that you have on the page, you can easily, you can use this uh, tool also to navigate. is purple, to, what color is it? To navigate to that section. For example, if I want here. Country, zip slash, state slash province, city. Edit Just text. to the city, city, I can press enter. City, edit text. And it moves me directly to that city section, to the city field. So back to rotor. Text fields menu. As you notice that it remembers your last position or your last uh, rotor that you have selected. I press right arrow key. Images menu. And then I arrow down. Accessible university image. Robot with a friendly face assembled with various yeah, just want to say, say that you know it shows me this stuff. But what I wanted again, I want uh, to know that uh, I got a little distracted because I realized that I didn't mention the rotor to you. I wanted to see that how the page is constructed. So the first thing that we look at the screen reader is a landmark. Text out check buttons, no item landmarks menu. Landmark. I press it down. Banner. It's a banner. Main menu navigation. Main. Main. Okay. Content information. That's just perfect score. So I give an, <laughs> an A plus to that. So it has all those uh, main regions that I needed. Then if I am interested, for example, to go to main. Main. I, I press enter. Heading level two, featured story slideshow. My focus is right at the beginning of the main region. Back to the rotor again. Landmarks menu. I want to see that they learn a little bit about the content of the page. So I look for the heading. Tables map form headings menu. I arrow down. Heading level one, accessible university image. Oh, the person who created this page, he knows about accessibility. I'm joking. <laughs> heading level two, featured story slideshow. Heading level two, followed by heading level one, structure, well structure. Heading so level far. two, welcome. Heading level two. Bienvenido. And you notice that. Heading love, heading level two. Bienvenido. It switched automatically to a Spanish, uh, a different voice, but we will look into that. Heading level two, can you spot the barriers? Heading level two, AU enrollment trends. And so on. So as the, I use this usually as an outline of the content that I am facing, I am dealing with. So that is the, uh, the, 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 the power of the heading. So while I am here, let's see that uh, how it automatically switches to the language after I enable the Spanish in my web 
I don't know, one of the settings. Heading level two, heading level two, heading level two, welcome, heading level two. Bienvenido. Okay, I press enter. Heading Go level there. two. Bienvenido. So you are currently on heading level two. I go left, so accessible university. So I I am now going to the I press a wo right. Heading level two. Bienvenido. You are currently on heading level two. That's the instruction. Accessible universidad. Ua es una universidad ficticia y esta es su página de ficción. Esta página está diseñada para demostrar. I stop. So my Spanish is not that good, but you know, but uh, but uh, I guess you guys noticed that it's switched to Spanish. And that is the thanks to the uh, the the language attribute that uh, the Terry all included in that span this this second Contenido. page. Yeah. Okay. What how are we doing with the time? Eleven fifteen right now. Eleven fifteen. Okay. So we have <laughs> already gone, gone over that. So we have some. I um. Uh, the, so let, let's let's handle the with the form. Uh, he, one one important thing I'm, I'm trying to start, uh, but uh, I do not know how it ends. I have never explained that uh, in in a in a webinar settings. It's switching between interactive mode and then uh, then then in uh, and then reading mode. So. If you notice that I am just using heading level two, can you this page is in reading the page visited, see a link, uh, period, and so on. Heading level two, AU enrollment trends, reading the text. But if I want to interact with the page, name required, required, edit text with autofill H, yeah. H, H, name, F12 key button. Oh, you are currently on the button. To press this button, the email required. So you are currently on a text help. I set my voiceover so when I tap to a form control, it automatically goes into the interaction mode. But if it doesn't, if you first, uh, you know, you notice that it is not a, a typing in, in, for example, text field, then you need to change the uh, the the. Uh, the the, the reading uh, the the mode the uh, the key that they're uh, changing the uh, that mode usually happens uh, because they, they call that quick nav nav for navigation i am pressing left and right arrow key together quick nav quick nav off quick nav off quick nav on quick nav on when i am quick and nav on name required email required Consider what happened when I'm quick nap on. Heading level three, security question. You see that? As, you are as, on as, as, I, as soon as I type letter H, screen reader or voiceover stole my H and then interpreted it as a command and moved me to the next heading. So in order for me to interact with the form, I have to make sure that I am in my, my quick nap is off. Off means you know normal <laughs> but quick nap on it means you are in the reading mode so that is really an important concept that uh, that i would like that everybody knows that and 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 uh, if it's not clear then you know study uh, and if you want you know sometime we can meet and then i would be glad to help you to uh, make it a little more clear to you but again uh, in order to interact with some elements like edit box, text box that you have to type, you definitely need to be in a, in a quick nav off. Uh, otherwise, it will not type. Quick nav off. Show sidebar button. Oops. Tab group picker. Go okay. back menu button. Show tap, show sidebar tab group picker. Tap go back menu button. So Show the previous the, uh, page. Or, or we should take a break. Uh, Anna Maria, we are a little over the, the scale, you know, time uh, because of the technical issues that we had. I think we, we discussed some of the basic accessibility of voiceover, how to use voiceover here. Uh, what do you think about taking a 10 minutes break and come back for NVDA? which would be much easier. You are muted.
Okay. Sounds great to me, Hadi. Okay. Hey guys, uh, for those of you uh, who are interested to see also the NVDA, which is uh, a, a free screen reader uh, for Windows, uh, please come back in 10 minutes and then it will be fun. We will be using uh, Chrome and NVDA. Oh, Firefox, right? Yeah. Yeah. Five, 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 five. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Hold on, and then sorry for the uh, you know technical issues that we have, but you know sometimes it is we this is out of our control. It's when the, the device decides to go in a strike, then we can't change it. <laughs> Thank you, and then the, the talk to you shortly. Bye bye for now. This meeting is being recorded. Alert! Click that alert. Uh, it's not there anymore. So not okay. Uh, good morning again. Uh, and uh, welcome to our uh, NVDA uh, voice, uh, NVDA screen reader section. Uh, we will continue with our uh, uh, workshop. Uh, for those of you who joined us right now, we covered earlier with some difficulty the voiceover section, but now we are going to Windows and then NVDA. We decided to use NVDA because this is a kind of a vanilla screen reader program, which is free, and then it doesn't do that, this uh, doesn't use this guessing algorithm as, as JAWS, like JAWS does. So that way you get a more straightforward answer or, or more, a more accurate uh, result than, than JAWS. Um, again, if you have, uh, follow the instruction that we send it to you. By now, I assume you are sitting at your Windows computer, NVDA is running. And then let me get a feedback. Uh, how many of you are running NVDA right now? Or are you planning to follow as we go? Can I have one hand up? Two? More, please. Three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it is really an opportunity for you to start your NVDA and then uh, follow along uh, that, that, uh, that, that you can see some of this problem or some of this configuration in action. Okay. Um, again, I assume that you have installed it. So the first thing that we did at, uh, in, in voiceover section is that to how to adjust the voice. And then, you know, the NVDA setting that it is comfortable, you choose the right voice, you choose the right rate and, and, and uh, intonation and other, other features. Uh, by default, NVDA comes with a voice that it is uh, very difficult to understand, it's, uh, you know, it's not very sophisticated, but uh, you have some free voices that you can use. Uh, and then I guess we have sent the instruction how to change it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am using for uh, uh, some reason, you know, I'm using a paid voice, uh, which is also, uh, you know, you are also welcome to uh, purchase it. I think last time I paid for that, this was $64 for one-time fee, but it gives you a lot more uh, voices. So uh, I would like to take you first to the in, uh, NVDA settings, like uh, voiceover. Uh, you can have caps lock as a additional modifier key by default is the insert key. So having a full keyboard uh, is really important or very handy if you have it. If you do not have a uh, you know, numeric keypad uh, or uh, a dedicated insert key, it would be very difficult to use in BDA. Um, Note that some of these commands that we have to use, they are on the left side, some of them on the right side. So uh, it is good to have one modifier on each side so you can handle uh, these commands effectively. And 
as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to do that handstand to trigger a function. Um, I, in my case, uh, in my, my comp computer, I have set the caps lock to be my modifier too. So I am going to the NVDA settings. Share your screen first. Oh, good, good idea. Select the window, more drop down button. Accept participants can now see your screen. Zoom meeting, accessible unit, Zoom meet, Ac accessible. Okay, I press uh, caps lock N, N for N NVDA. NVDA menu. Well, I hope that you have seen that before. Preferences sub menu P. So preferences is the where you see the options. Settings. S. And settings is the where most uh, of those uh, voice uh, the NVDA settings are. NVDA settings, general, normal configuration, so dialog. Cat I am pressing tab in this uh, setting. General property page, NVDA language requires restart save configure show okay. exit save, save configuration probably you want to set it show exit options when exiting nvda check for um, again if you are a frequent user you probably want that you know is silently uh, quits and doesn't ask you every time for confirmation play sounds when starting or exiting and NVDA. this is some general function Logging level so logging level, probably you want to make sure that the, I, I think for those of you who are not a regular screen reader user, you do not want to set it on. Uh, but uh, it makes sense that I, for people like myself, who you, we, you that we use all the time, so we set it on. Same but configuration, let's go. NBDA language, categories, list. General one of- To go to the, the list of the category of settings, Speech two of 13. Speech is an important one. Speech property page. Synthesizer grouping. Synthesizer edit read only multi line alt plus s windows one core voices. We use one core voices. I thought we are using the other one, but one core this is a free one. And it is a good one. And if I want to change it, change. Select synthesizer dialog. Synthesizer. Combo box windows, one core voices, no speech. Window, Microsoft's eSpeak NG, Code Factory Vocalizer, Code Factory Eloquence. That is a voice that I told you, this is a paid one. I, I use that, it is a- Code, Code Factory Eloquence. Code Factory Eloquence, and then a Code Factory- Code Factory Vocalizer. Vocalizer. Vocalizer has more uh, pleasant, sounds or voices yeah if i press it and select it voices for nvda dialog you need to register your trial okay. or permanent license okay. before being it so the problem is that the my even is paid secure desktop lance synthesizer error dialog could not load top okay select synth top synthesizer code factory but east micro windows what no speech Windows one core. The problem was that you know, for since this is a paid one, the code that I had is not uh, is not working. Once in a while, they they reset the code, and then I have to re-enter. I don't have the code handy to enable that. But one the one core is a good one to choose. NVDA settings change voice combo box Microsoft David collapsed Alt plus V. Then you can use the different voices, you know, but. Uh, uh, Microsoft Zira. Microsoft Mark. Microsoft C Microsoft David. I'm using it up and down to select that. So that is the I understand this voice better than the others. Rate slider 50 Alt plus R. I arrow up and down. 51, 52, 50, 54. Or page up. 64, 74, 84, 94, 100. So 99, 98, 88. 78. I press page down. 68. 6, 57. 54. Arrow down. 53. 50, 51. 50. So let's go with, uh, 50. Uh, tab. Rate boost checkbox not checked. Alt plus T. Yeah, we don't want to touch it for pitch. now. Slider 50. Alt plus P. The, the here again, if I, if I change the pitch. 60. 70. 80. 90. It's become more scary, more scary ways. 70, 60, 50. <laughs> Play with it and then find a good adjustment. Really, the 50 is not, I usually set that on 50, but I am realizing that 
not everybody hears in the same way that I hear. So uh, change it uh, to uh, whatever setting that you prefer. Volume, slider 100 so alt plus. I can change all the volume for, uh, from NVDA here too. 90, 80, 70, 80. I go to 100. Automatic language switching when supported. Checkbox checked. So this is another feature that I say that, you know, for example, if you are testing, if you set this one to off, uh, even though the, 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 that page where you have the proper lang attribute, it will not switch. So that's why I, I, I think it makes more sense that I repeat my recommendation. Do not change these settings unless really you know what you are doing. Automatic dialect switching when supported punctuation slash symbol level. Like voiceover, it has also punctuation level. Most. So. Uh, All. Mo some. None. Okay, it's it doesn't most. have customization, but you know, voiceover had customization for that, but- uh, Some, most. So, some, most, uh, I usually use most. Trust voices language when processing characters and symbols checkbox checked. I have no idea what it is. Include Unicode consortium, capital pitch change so, percentage and it's elected. So how on you, how, how, again, a lot of fine tuning. I, I don't think we need to go through all of them, but see the other options. Auto yeah. pitch. Rate boost, rate, voice, synthesize, categories, list, speech 2 of 13, braille 3 of 13. Braille is not relevant to, to you guys. Vision 4 of 13. Vision, see that what we have in a vision. Vision property page, configure visual aids, visual okay. highlight grouping, enable highlighting checkbox, half check so, alt plus E. For example, it helps you when you are going through the voice or through the NVDA voice, uh, browsing with it. So it highlights the area that you are going through. Highlight system focus checkbox not checked alt plus C. Highlight navigator object checkbox not checked okay. alt. Highlight browse mode cursor checkbox checked alt plus M. So um, uh, the, again, these are some visual aid. Uh, and I guess the only thing that I changed that here Hi highlight system focused enable highlighting checkbox enable highlight here I checked that so when I move on the page people can see where I am when I'm not in a when I'm in a browse mode in a reading mode category keyboard 5 of 13 keyboard keyboard property page keyboard layout combo box laptop collapsed alt plus k okay desktop Okay, I do the, the desktop. Select NVDA modifier keys list. Caps lock checkbox check. That is also another place that you can could come come and then see that you know to check the caps lock to be to add it to your modifier. Keep categories list. Now six of the review cursor seven of thirteen. So input composition review. Again, there are a lot of setting. I don't want that we spend too much on that. But uh, let's go and okay that. Uh, cancel, but okay. Accessible university demos. Another thing that you want to know that is uh, you saw that uh, in, in voiceover we have uh, we call that uh, what we got the voiceover panel uh, caption panel that uh, practically whatever uh, voiceover reads, you can see in that box, we call that, uh, again, caption panel. Here, they call it, slide have different name for it. So uh, if you want to see what voice, uh, what NVDA says, and then it is sometimes it is too much information, you can go and NVDA met preferences sub menu tool sub menu to tools view log B speech viewer S they call that the speech viewer so when I check that, accessible university demo site dash accessible version M dash Mozilla fuck I stop it so you see all the information that is spoken in that uh, speech viewer okay so uh, I am hearing from my student that sometimes it is in our, in our way and we cannot see that. Uh, I do not know how much you can move it around. Can we move it around? Yes, I can move yep, it around. Yeah, can move around the mouse. And we show speech viewer on yeah. startup okay, checkbox, just... not check alt plus S. Yep. Yeah, okay. and, and, and so. Bookmark, accessible university. Uh, again, this is good for the beginner because you can see what the voiceover says. Uh, sometimes you again you see that a lot of verbiage 
then uh, processing that audibly it is difficult. So you might want to read and then make sure. And then uh, sometimes even you can see that, uh, for example, you have sentences, you have some aria labels that are merged with the other labels. And you see that hey, uh, the, the texts are running into each other. So it helps you to see that hey, maybe I use a comma to separate them or put a period to separate those uh, texts. Okay, um, now. Show speech viewer on startup. Accessible show speech viewer on startup checkbox not checked alt plus s x dismiss task x and show speech viewer accessible university demos now now here with nvda uh, uh, it is very different from very different uh, from uh, voiceover the way how voice uh, nvda handles that have renders the information we call that flat view so it renders everything that we see that we didn't have time in nvda to in voiceover to see that how we handle for example tables so you know, while nvda gives you a very flat view of the uh, information from the dom uh, voiceover give you a top level access uh, 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 on the objects. For example, you can see everything there, but you do not see the details of some of those elements. For example, if you have a table, you will see that there is a table, for example, of a 10 row or five column. But in order to interact with it in voiceover, you have to press a command uh, you know, to get into the table and be able to see the, the content of the table. Uh, or you have a toolbar, you see there is a toolbar, but you do not see the items in a toolbar until you decide uh, to go and yes, uh, you said, uh, yes, I want to explore the items in the toolbar. In, 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 in NVDA and JAWS, uh, you see everything exposed. So you see the toolbar along with the items in it. You see the table along with all the column and rows and then data cells uh, at the same time. So somewhat it is easier. Uh, you will be dealing with more context content here, uh, but, uh, but it is, they are immediately available. So pe people have their preferences. Um, I grew up with Windows View. I am still more comfortable with Windows View than, than you know, uh, VoiceOver, where we have to uh, expose every table uh, as we need or when we need them. So it is a little more work. Main menu navigation okay, landmark. Here, uh, when we are browsing a page, the first thing that we did at in VoiceOver was checking for the landmark. Here, the shortcut keys are easier. We don't have to do that so many, uh, press so many keys. Uh, and most commands, they involve insert key or insert key or, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm pressing insert key and F7. That is a really one of the keys that you have to remember. Elements list dialog, tree view. Students Engineering Award, one of seven levels. Elements list dial, type colon, grouping, links radio Here, button, check out. This panel allows me to see the headings, radio, headings, form fields, radio form button, fields, check out, buttons, radio, buttons, landmarks, radio and button, landmarks. check out, plus D. So when I switch to landmark, it is something like a rotor, but you know, a little more simplified <laughs> than the, the other one. So tree view. Then I can main see menu. same information. Main, main menu semi navigation banner one of five level zero. Start with banner. Main menu semi navigation two of five level zero. Main three of five level zero. Apply now semi. Form four of five levels, your content info five of five levels. Okay, so on. So same ARIA landmark that we 
cell in, in the Mac, we see that here. So, and then if I need to switch to one of them, a block main three of five, for example, main, I press enter key, main landmark, B. and my focus goes right there. Do you see that visually there? Yeah, you see the little browse cursor. That's, well, cursor. Yeah. Okay. that's good. So, everybody can follow that where I am. So, the beauty again, beauty of uh, uh, having this accessibility feature is not just to get give you an idea how the page is constructed or the content is constructed it allows you also to navigate to it quickly so uh, the next thing that we do checking for the content same shortcut key insert f7 elements list dialog tree view but we choose this time heading type colon grouping Landmarks radio but headings radio button check alt plus h. I press tab key to go through this section. Level one featured story slideshow. Level zero accessible university expanded one of one. Level one featured story slideshow one of six. Welcome. Bienvenido. Three of six level one. So it did not switch the language. Maybe one core does not have that uh, feature spanish version bienvenido heading left inex heading level two bienvenido accessible universe at a brier parent yeah. it does not switch to the language probably uh, i haven't installed the spanish language uh, for for nvda i have done for the other computer at home but not here uh, so if we had that language, that, that the Spanish support for uh, uh, for one core, it would have done, it has switched that. But let me say that uh, ESpeak, which is the default speaker, at uh, the default engine, it has a Spanish. Let me, let me switch that briefly to menu, preferences, settings, and speech to speech change. Select ESpeak NG. And the AI settings do not uh, speech. Okay. So if I go to and change the, the language. PC selected. MG selected. MG unselected. Marion to max. Voice version. Inflect volume, volume add. Voice version. Voice FMC and voice F in the voice trend, voice trend, voice trend channel. F. Mark your girl, it will be included. You said these are the language. At all languages it has. It's on English America now. English America. Okay. English left for America right for accessible university demo site that heading left. So let me main. now go to navigate to the landmark Spanish text. text. Main landmark feature welcome. Heading in Benivo. Heading level accessible university and parenthesis to hacer parenthesis es una universidad ficticia. Y esta es su página de ficción. Esta página. Sounds, <laughs> sounds Spanish to me, but as I said, the quality of the this uh, the default voice is so bad that this is very difficult so if you are dealing with the multi-language uh, content you uh, you want to use it in vda you probably want to upgrade to a more uh, better voice so let me go back and, and change it to and uh, to that MBDA one core again references settings it's yes. 155 by the way the mm -hmm. okay so accessible university metal. okay so um Thank you for the. Uh, uh, let me just switch this. this, this MBDA map references sub settings. MBDA settings colon. Get speech to a 13. Change. But now select synthesizer dialogue. Synthesizer code factory. What code factory eloquence? Copy speak and Microsoft Windows 1 or no speak Windows 1. NVDA settings. Okay, back to English. <laughs> the other one didn't sound like it. Access. Same same thing that we had uh, for voiceover. There are a lot of screen reader commands here that can help me to go to different uh, to, to, to help with the navigation. For you saw that the headings, 
uh, I can even when I am in Heading a text, patches of I can just press letter H. Can you spot the barriers? Take me to the next heading. Oh, enrollment trends. Or if I want to go to the next table, I press letter T. Oh, enrollment trends table with six rows and 13 columns. And in. then navigate in not the in table. Ta not in a table, not in a table, 2000, the year, not in a table, six rows. Caption, oh, enrollment trends. Not in a table cell. Not in a table blank. 2007, 2000, edge of table. 2, 2, blank. Edge of tick, ed, ed, edge of tick, edge of tick, edge of tick, edge of tick. Caption, oh, enroll. Not in a table cell. Not in a I, I do not, I mean, this is a good table, but this, that is telling me that uh, something does, it does not see the table as a proper table. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is something that I need to discuss with Terio. But uh, again, I, che I checked it last night, it was working fine. So it is, this is something NVDA is fading. Um, it is good that, that you guys see that, uh, even for me, who is, I consider myself as a, a professional user, we run into a situation that it is out of our control. And we probably I have to restart NVDA and then it will work fine. Mm -hmm. But let me also show you one quick thing with the, uh, uh, you know, two, changing the mode. And here, like here, when I go to form name colon left paren, I press letter right F paren. to take me to the next form element. But NVDA shows speech viewer on startup checkbox. See robot here. with a free. Robot with accessible university here, demo right. site dash okay, accessible version okay. m dash email colon if I, main menu for navigation. example I'm, I am form name colon left paren it tells me the, right paren. it tells me the name of the uh, control this is a name but uh, when I type let's start uh, H to type my name security question heading level it is it, it stole my uh, key and then can interpret it as a as a heading uh, as if i am searching for next heading so it did not work it, this would mean that i am not in interaction mode so uh, Out of the reading name. mode the mode that i am right now in nvda is called browse mode and then if you want to go to to uh, Email colon, name colon. I am on that form. If I want to type uh, or be switch the mode, there are many ways to do that. The easiest way is just to press enter on this field before you type your name, or the default key is an insert space. Apply now. You probably did, uh, you hear the uh, sound, uh, but again, Security question heading country col zip email colon name colon. I am again in the reading mode. I press enter. I am in. Uh, you pr heard probably the sound. I can then then we can start typing. Hadi email colon at edu city colon and it has auto country col desired major left paren s right per checked. Engineering checkbox, economic, physics checkbox, Spanish. If a cow is purple, what color is it? And it required invalid entry has so auto complete. I am not going to answer that to see that if I get an error. Submit button. Alert, please fill out this field. If a cow is purple, what color is it? You see that? And it required invalid entry has you auto complete that? blank. Uh, uh, thanks to the live region. I, uh, and then, you know, thanks to our co-programmer, uh, <laughs> Terio, who implemented that. So it not only announced error, it also uh, uh, moved me back to that where the error occurred and so on. Uh, 12 colon zero it, zero. It is top of the hour. We can stay or some of us can stay for another 10 or 15 minutes if you have questions. But if you need to leave, feel free to do it. Uh, thank you again uh, for coming to this workshop. Uh, again, sorry if uh, we had uh, technical issues, uh, um, but uh, I think those are of you who are in technology, you understand that uh, sometimes we cannot, we have 100% control of that. I hope you found this workshop uh, useful, helpful, and then you can know that how to contact us. We will be sending the recording, links to the recording on the slides later. 
And thanks also to my students there who presented also this accessibility testing uh, tools uh, and how to check for technical accessibility problem. With this, I pass it to Terio. Uh, uh, and then, you know, if again, I am sitting, we are sitting here and then we will be glad to answer your question, but uh, you are welcome to leave. Thanks, Hadi, and thanks, uh, thanks to your team, and thanks to everybody who joined us this morning. Uh, we do have a two two hour break, um, and then those of you that uh, are coming to the afternoon sessions, I uh, encourage you to do that. We've got alt text for images and accessible charts starting at two o'clock, uh, followed by accessible tables in Word and PDF. So you've kind of gotten a gotten a glimpse at you know how generally how how. Uh, a screen reader user interacts with content and how you can play around with screen readers and, and you know, try to interact with content as well. Um, this afternoon, we'll be focusing on a few specific things that we've gotten a lot of questions about, how to author those in a way um, that maximizes their accessibility. So I hope you can come back um, later on this afternoon and, and join us for those sessions. Thanks again, everybody.